Hey everyone, welcome to week 10, day 5. So this is the week where we tackle our fears. So I think we've had an awesome week. Uh, we did Danny's interlaced fingers, we painted a car in sunlight, like filtering through a tree. Uh, we did a bag, a plastic bag full of like loose change. Uh, yesterday, tough. We painted with those horrible, <laughs> you know, neon colors that I've always avoided. And I think we did an awesome painting. And today, I'm going to paint something that I've been afraid of through my entire life. So this is going to be, uh, <laughs> this is going to be like therapy for me. But it's been an awesome week. And I think what it's proven is that being afraid of painting something is completely irrational and it doesn't make sense. And if we just, you know, try and paint it and give our best, then those fears disappear. And that is the truth. So let's see what I paint today. I'll see you guys next week. New theme next week. Bye. Okay, last day of our fear themed week. And this day is gonna be a strange one. I think we've, we've tried to define every single day fear also, it, it doesn't, have to be about subject matter. It doesn't have to exclusively be about those things that we're afraid to paint. And while I was trying to to sort of search for that definition in my head, I realized I should paint something that I've been afraid of for my entire life. And this is bigger than painting. And I've gotten better with it because I've grown just accustomed to their presence. And even though I realize that they're harmful to me, I am not so afraid of them anymore, but if you put me right next to a bumblebee, I would probably run <laughs> away screaming. So today I'm going to paint a bee, and the reason I'm painting a bee is because I'm just horrified of them because I'm allergic to them. Ever since I was little, I would get stung by anything. It could be a mosquito bite. I still have memories of a vacation that we were in the States, and... I got stung by some dumb mosquito and I had to be taken to the hospital. And I remember my dad, rest in peace, when they were going to take what I'm guessing was a little band-aid uh, that was covering the uh, mosquito bite. And I remember my dad telling me, oh, look up, somebody's flying a kite. And I was probably, I don't know, I'm probably like eight years old, seven years old. And I remember looking up and then whoop, my dad just, just uh, quickly, like, ripping the, uh, the Band-Aid off. That's, like, my earliest memory of a bug stinging me and me acknowledging that I'm allergic. But I also have this other memory. I had a <laughs> best friend in the neighborhood I, I grew up in. And he was, uh, he's an amazing guy. But he was, like, my best friend that's also my worst influence <laughs> in my childhood. I remember we were in some backyard and there was this uh this bee in the grass just there and he convinced me and we were very young i mean probably eight nine years old and i was probably very stupid <laughs> and he he was convincing me and he convinced me in the end that we could catch this bee and he was like oh no 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 they do sting but if you put your hands on top of the bee you know they're not going to do anything to you. That's totally fine. If you do anything else, they'll sting you. But if you just kind of cup your hands on top of the bee, you're going to be totally fine. And of course, I did that <laughs> like an idiot. And of course, the bee uh, stung me. And I remember crying and running and screaming, overreacted a little bit. But it was one of those things that I started realizing that, yeah, if you get stung by a bee, it hurts but also that my body just swells up like crazy. I mean, it is, I'm not going into shock, but I do swell up like crazy. So ever since I was young, I realized I have to be very, very careful with bees. And it was bittersweet because when we moved into this apartment with Danny, we saw one of these little bees, it was dead. And I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful but it's so dramatic also pollinization is is like carrying life this beautiful beautiful being it was caught mid carrying all this pollen to wherever it was headed and it just died on the floor and i took a picture of it and i realized how 
insanely fragile it looked. It was a tragedy. It was like this small tragedy. I also remembered that I was making all these experiments with encaustic. It was inevitable that I had to open up all the windows where I was painting, be it my studio or my room. And the beeswax obviously would call in all these honeybees. I remember just at that moment acknowledging, okay, if I want this to be my medium, I have to accept that I'm going to be calling a bunch of bees every single day to come visit me while I paint. So instead of being horrified, I started accepting their presence and, and noticing that if you don't do anything to them, they don't do anything to you. I started reflecting upon why I ended up using beeswax. And if you guys don't know, encaustic painting has been a partner of painting for centuries now. Those Fayum mummy portraits are over 2,000 years old. Uh, which is absolutely incredible. When we think of the definition that we have of contemporary painting, we always associate it with 1420s, mid-1400s, when oil painting was kind of beginning, like the origins of using oil as vehicle for pigment was starting. So it was very, very strange for me when I first realized that there was a ton of painting done before, but painting that could actually be considered similar to traditional oil painting. And these mummy portraits where they used encaustic are absolutely incredible. They're a testament of how our ability to paint, to understand painting as medium for representation has always been with us. When I saw how wax had been our partner for so, so long, had been painting's partner for so long, I was like, I have to do this. I actually have to learn how to do this. And I went straight for encaustic. Encaustic actually means that you have to use beeswax and you use carnauba wax, carnauba, which is a very, very brittle wax. And the reason traditionally you want to use the two of them is because beeswax is actually amazing, but it's super soft. It's very, very soft and malleable. And you actually need a harder wax so it can help balance it. Carnauba is actually a very, very hard but brittle wax. You can actually break it with your fingers. So you wouldn't be able to paint with either one of them. But if you mix the two of them, you get this perfect, perfect balance. It's almost like using oil and varnish. So oil is amazing and it's flexible, but it can't adhere to anything. So we need varnish, which is very, very tacky and sticky. And it actually creates a very firm uh, film once it dries. That's why oil and varnish have been part of traditional painting for centuries now. So you would use these two waxes in encaustic and traditional encaustic in the hopes of getting a perfect wax as a vehicle for your pigment. But because wax is a great vehicle like oil, it needs the aid of a resin like oil needs varnish. So instead of using just the mar varnish, we use the resin. So we don't dissolve it in turpentine. So you have to melt the wax and melt the resin. It's better to melt the resin first because it actually takes a lot longer for the resin to melt. You add the wax. You can add a little bit of oil if you want. You can add turpentine if you want to cut it a little bit. But traditionally, you don't need to do anything else, just wax and resin. And what you have now is a medium that you obviously have to use while it's hot. And this is the toughest thing about encaustic painting, that you are basically painting with a hot plate as your palette. It's insane. It's amazing, but it's insane. And so you take this medium that you have uh, mixed and you put pigment in it. And if you let that kind of cool down, what you'll have is like these cakes of color that are absolutely beautiful. And once you melt them, you can just paint with that. Now, the, the most incredible thing that happens when you paint with encaustic is that as soon as you put that brushstroke onto your surface, it dries immediately. 
it it actually dries as soon as it touches the surface. So you get this incredibly expressive stroke, just insanely, insanely expressive stroke. It's like your gesture has been sort of frozen in time. That's how beautiful it is. Now, if everything was just about adding these very stiff gestures, you know, if, if, if encaustic was about the addition of, of these very stiff gestures, you would get like a super, super heavy expressionistic painting. But the most beautiful thing about encaustic is that you can actually create softness. So what you would do is you would eventually just get a source of heat that can now be like an infrared lamp or it used to be these trash cans full of coal that would just emit all this heat. I use a heat gun. So they all kind of blend together and they fuse, creating this very, very stiff, super, super stable surface of color, if you want to think of it that way. And it's absolutely incredible what you can get. Now, the only reason I shied away from painting with encaustic was that it was a mess. <laughs> I'm a messy painter, but painting with encaustic, particularly for me, if I was trying to be very gestural with my paint, oh my God, I'd be flinging wax everywhere. It was just a mess. It was a mess to clean up. So I actually ended up doing a couple of paintings with encaustic, maybe three, four or five, if I remember correctly. I was so enamored by wax that I started just doing like a, a baby encaustic medium. So I took all the benefit of the wax, but I, I didn't want to deal with all the mess. So what I ended up doing is, is using like a wax medium, which was you melt wax in equal parts and you can then add turpentine. So you cut it a little bit. Also oil, I would use stand oil or a heavy bodied oil like sun thickened. And I would use uh, Demarc because you have to let the varnish help actually adhere the medium to a surface. And it was an incredible medium. I think I painted with the wax medium for maybe about five years. And I think if you ask me, it probably has to be one of my most favorite mediums. It's very hard to use, very, very hard to use because there's a grab to it. Uh, wax behaves in a very, very kind of strange way. So it's not easy to model with it. It's not easy to render with wax, but it just creates such an amazing film. It's so, so particular that it looks like nothing that I've ever painted with, and it feels like nothing that I've ever painted with. So when I was using this wax, like I said, I became like Snow White. I was calling all these bees to come and keep me company while I was painting. And I was still horrified. I was still absolutely horrified of them. But I started accepting their presence and recognizing that if I was going to use this little moment of nature, you know, being uh, beeswax, then I had to expect to have their company. So I thought that was amazing. So it was a little bittersweet because it was kind of sad when I, I saw this little honeybee and I thought it, it was perfect for this week. It was perfect for finishing this week too, in the sense that, you know, the purpose of this week was not just to say, oh yeah, things are tough to paint and let's just suck it up. And all of us, we just have to get good and have to get better and we have to draw more and have to paint more. And it's all about just doing more, more, more and intensity. And, you know, that's the only thing that's going to help us paint better. No, I think I think for me this week, the biggest lesson that I took from it was that it is really about mindset. A lot of the obstacles that I see in front of myself when I paint, they have nothing to do with this arbitrary, totally random reason that I concocted that makes me believe that some things are more difficult than others. I think that, yes, I have to be super, super concentrated when painting something that is complex, but <laughs> when can I feel relaxed when I'm painting? Never. Like I'm always, always on. Like my concentration is always, always there. So if you told me that I just have to concentrate a lot while I'm painting, well, that's, you know, true for every single day I've ever painted in my life. So I don't know what changes, really. What I noticed during this week was that if I'm in the right mindset, when I'm painting something, if I have a plan of attack, and if I 
execute it with just tranquility and patience and also acknowledgement that this is complex subject matter, but I have to try and solve it and I have to try to be intelligent while solving it. Then, honestly, that first thing we said at the beginning of the week, there are no tough things to paint. You just have to find a way. And maybe we've dedicated more time to just running away and convincing ourselves that the reasons that we can't paint them are absolutely valid instead of confronting these things. And when I made myself confront these fears, then I realized they're not so scary. So they were like this little bee that when I accepted the fact that it was going to keep me company while I was painting with this beeswax medium, then I realized you don't need to harm me and I don't need to squish you out of fear. We could just kind of acknowledge each other's presence and just be okay with it and then everything is fine. So like I said, bittersweet, but I thought the nicest way I could honor the nature of this amazing little being was just by painting it. And and uh, I thought it was it was nice. It was a very nice way to finish the week. So I hope you guys liked it. Uh, next week, we're going to have a whole new theme. Thank you for letting Danny and I be your company during this week. Thank you for letting us be close to you. So I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.